floor, please. Please have a seat, council members and staff. Staff, please leave the main floor. Quiet, please. Quiet on the floor, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate. All electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of May 29th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Quiet in the chamber. Quiet in the chamber. Adams. I am present. Empry Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Yo estoy aquí. Drum. Present. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Gradenchik. Present. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lantzman. Here. Lander. Here. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Perkins. Present. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Thank you. Here. <laughs> Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Thank you. Right. Ulrich. Vallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now move into today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Andy Bachman of the Jewish Project, which is located at 146 Duane Street in Manhattan. Please rise. Source of life and light, source of justice and truth, source of freedom, love, and peace. 
inspire and give strength to these elected officials and all who aid them in the good work of the New York City Council. Inspire their hearts and minds to do what is right. Guide them along paths of fairness and equity. Deepen their commitment to a generosity of spirit in serving all New Yorkers of all faiths and genders and nations of origin to band together and celebrate the blessing of life, the wonder of creation, and the animating idea that there is always more that unites us than divides us, and that together we can build a city and a nation and a world of justice and peace. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Bachman. I'd now like to ask Councilmember Chin to spread the invocation on record. Keep it down, please. Keep it down, Beth. Thank you, Majority Leader. Ordained as a rabbi in 1996 by the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, Rabbi Andy Bachman has served his community for more than two decades. Before becoming the executive director of the Jewish Community Project downtown, Rabbi Bachman served the Brooklyn Jewish community in a number of capacities. In 2003, Rabbi Bachman and his wife, along with several friends, founded Brooklyn Jews, an innovative outreach program for the many unaffiliated Jews who have made Brooklyn their home in the past decade. Rabbi Bachman is a deeply committed Jewish leader who has dedicated his life to expanding and strengthening all aspects a pluralistic Jewish public, private, and non-for-profit organization. I thank Rabbi Bachman for gracing us with his invocation, and I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Chin. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Holden. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 9, 2019 be adopted as printed. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Councilmember Holden. We will now have message and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M167 discount rate. Petitions and communications. Hold on. We have to go back to that one. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you could read number five again. Certainly. Pre-considered M167 discount rate. Finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M168, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled up on call-up vote. At this time, I would like a roll call vote on today's land use call-up. Great. Lanceman. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. Thank you. I vote aye. Adams. I'd like to welcome all of our students that are here today shadowing us. Special shout out to my student Yvette Banks from Professional Pathways High School. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Hi, and I just want to say hello and we'll introduce my amazing student, Nicole Allen, and we vote aye on all. Ayala. So I'm going to introduce Eliza Santiago, who's with me, um, and I vote aye on all. Baron. Borelli, Brannon. Shout out to Melanie from Queens who's riding shotgun with me today, aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Special shout out to Dereth who is my uh, shout out today and I vote aye. Deutsch. Diaz, Drum, Espinal, Aye, Eugene, I vote Aye, Gibson, Jonai, Aye, Gordenchik. With a shout out to uh, Alexander Santana from the Great Borough of the Bronx, a land of my parents' birth and my birth, I vote Aye. Holden, I vote Aye. 
Kalos. King. I want to give a shout out to all our shadows today, especially Brother Anthony Robinson, who is graduating with his master's degree come June 12th this year. Congratulations to him in criminal justice, and I vote aye on all. Monroe College in the house. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lander. Glad to be joined by Shira Isakoff, and I vote aye. Levin. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Permission to vote on all land use call ups and general order, couple general order items. Permission granted. I vote aye on all. And welcome to all the young people in our house. Miller. I vote aye. Moya. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. I would aye. Richards. I would like to welcome Trinity Red there, who, who, who I'm shadowing, and, and who is going to become an NYPD police officer one day. So, yeah. uh, and with that, I vote aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. I have, um, Tamane Hamilton and I vote. Aye. I say aye. 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 Thank you. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Miguel Ortiz. He's a constituent of mine. He also goes to John Jay, and I vote aye on all. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Um, Mr. Trigger and I vote aye, I mean. Yes, that is correct. And I just want to add vote aye that Lorraine's favorite subject in high school is history, and that is why she is the best. Vote aye and all. <laughs> Deutsch. Aye. Ulrich. Vallone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye, and I am so pleased to recognize all of the Foster Youth Shadow Day participants, particularly Erica Francois from SUNY New Paul, studying journalism and psychology, and wants to pursue a master's degree at Columbia Journalism School, as well as Trené Ka, who is at Stony Brook, and she is a political science major. And I hope in the future that they will add to the next campaign of 21 and 21, but they'll be more like 41 in 41. So I'm so happy to welcome all of this dynamic women energy here in the council today with my two uh, Shadow Foster Day participants who are dynamic women, and I vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Shh. I hope you all enjoyed the sun this Memorial Day weekend. As we all know, this holiday is more than just the unofficial start to summer. Memorial Day commemorates the service women and men who gave their lives for our country. We are profoundly grateful to those women and men, and we should remember them not just on Memorial Day, but every day. Jumping back into our agenda that we have, as we always do at Stated, sadly, today, once again, we acknowledge those who have succumbed to 9-11 related illnesses and others who have lost their lives in the line of duty. I would like to honor Vincent Goff, who passed away at the age of 52 earlier this month due to illnesses he developed serving down at Ground Zero. He served in the US Marine Corps before joining the NYPD and retiring as a sergeant detective. Additionally, a construction worker lost his life while working on a job in Midtown Manhattan on May 18th. His name has not been released 
but we know that he was 49 years old. Our thoughts and prayers are with these families, friends, and colleagues. In honor of these New Yorkers, I ask that we all rise and take a moment of silence in their name. Thank you all. I have some exciting news today. May is Foster Care Awareness Month. And today marks the fifth annual Foster Youth Shadow Day here at City Hall. I want to thank uh, my predecessor, a previous speaker, Speaker Mark Viverito, for starting this really important day here at City Hall. And I want to thank our partners at Fostering Youth Success Alliance and Children's Aid. We have 20 young people visiting us who have spent time in the foster care system. They are amazing. They are amazing. They are amazing, 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 amazing New Yorkers. And it is a great opportunity for us as council members to hear firsthand what their experiences have been like and to get to know these young people who, as the majority leader said, are the future of our dynamic and great city. With me today is Gabby, who will be a senior at, senior, at City College this fall. She is studying early childhood education, and I am so excited to get to know her. She wants to be a teacher serving public school students in New York City. She lives uptown. She lives uptown. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the fellow council members for participating in this wonderful day uh, and for all of uh, the work that you do in supporting these young people. Uh, I want to thank all of our visitors. I hope to see some of you back in this council one day, representing communities, hopefully as council members. And before I dive into today's agenda, Council Member Levin uh, isn't here today. He's on paternity leave. Uh, but I want to turn it over to the chair of our Youth Services Committee, Councilwoman Debbie Rose, who wants to make some remarks on this really important day, Foster Youth Shadow D, here at the City Council. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson, um, and thank you for your support to make this day a special day. As the Speaker mentioned earlier, this is a very special stated, and I am proud to be co-hosting Foster Youth Shadow Day. Um, Steve Levin usually chairs this event. Um, he has an innate love for, for foster care. We have with us more than a dozen young people in care and alumni who are shadowing us for the day. As we make laws here that directly impact the lives of young people, my hope is that they have an opportunity to learn more about how the City Council operates on a day-to-day -day basis. And to the young people here today, I say, this is your city government. City Hall is your house, and we want you to be able to navigate city government so that we can truly work for you. More importantly, we have something to learn from you. One of the reasons we host this day is so that we can hear more about your foster care experiences so that we can improve the foster care system. We want to do everything we can to ensure every young person is touched by, who is touched by the system has the opportunity to reach their full potential. I am so proud to be joined today by Tamane Hamilton, a young resident of the Bronx. Though his primary work is in the management with Levels Barbershop, his passion is in working with young people. He volunteers with ACS, working to help give young people a voice and new opportunities. He hopes to secure a permanent position with ACS, and he plans to return to Hostos Community College in September. So I welcome Tamane to City Hall and to all of our future leaders and our visitors here today. I look forward to hosting a roundtable discussion with all of you after stated. And I hope that you take the opportunity to make this, this visit today um, about opportunity and empowerment. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Debbie, for your incredible, incredible leadership. And Councilmember Rose doesn't uh, speak about this uh, often, but she, before she ran for council, she ran 
youth programs on Staten Island and spent so much of her career investing and supporting young people in the borough that she was born and raised in. And she has a deep, deep passion for this. And you should see her behind closed doors at the budget negotiating team talking about youth and young people. She is uh, fierce, and we are so grateful for her leadership. So thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, the Council will vote on the following finance items today. The Council is acting on the recommendations of the Banking Commission to set the interest rates that will be applied to fiscal 2020 for taxpayers who pay their property taxes early and late. For property owners who pay early, the Council is adopting a 0.5% discount rate. For property owners who pay late, the Council is adopting a 7% rate for properties with an assessed value of less than $250,000 and a rate of 18% for properties with an assessed value of more than $250,000. These are the same rates that were adopted for fiscal 2019. In addition, the Council will be voting on the following Article 11 property tax exemptions. Uh, Black Spruce Central Harlem in Councilmember Perkins's district, Black Spruce Washington Heights in Councilmember Mark Levine and Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez's district, Five Teller HDFC in Councilmember and Land Use Chair Rafael Salamanca's district, Walton Avenue Senior Housing in Councilmember Vanessa Gibson's district, Jennings Terrace Gardens in Councilmember Vanessa Gibson's district, Fairstead West 48th Street in my district. Fairstead, West 53rd Street, also in my district, and Lexington Court in Councilmember Bill Perkins and Diana Ayala's district. I want to thank the staff who worked on these Article 11 property tax exemptions, Noah Brick and Stephanie Ruiz. The Council will vote on the following land use items. 66 Hudson Yards Streetscape Text Amendment in my district will modify the special Hudson Yards district text relating to ground floor regulations and planting regulations in order to facilitate the development of an approximately 2.2 million square foot Class A office building. 47-15 34th Avenue rezoning in Councilmember Van Bramer's district uh, would facilitate the development of a new mixed-use building with 187 units, including 57 permanently affordable units. East Harlem follow-up actions in Councilmember Diane Ayala and Bill Perkins's districts in Manhattan will codify some of the East Harlem neighborhood rezoning points of agreement and will add height restrictions and requirements for a subway entrance relocation. MANA Products Text Amendment in Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer's district in Queens will facilitate the enlargement of an existing building to allow MANA Products to consolidate its operations in one location. And a Residential Voids Text Amendment will modify existing bulk regulations for residential buildings in certain districts. The Council will be modifying the application to restore a 25-foot height threshold for establishing whether a building's enclosed mechanical space would be counted as zoning floor area. The Department of City Planning has agreed to study additional loopholes and pursue follow-up actions. I want to thank the land use staff who worked on this, Chelsea Kelly, Jeff Yoon, and John Douglas. Moving on, the Council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. First, in honor of our veterans following Memorial Day, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, the chair of our Veterans Committee, has sponsored Introduction 1047A, which will require the Department of Veterans Services to coordinate with the Department of Consumer Affairs and other agencies to establish outreach and engagement efforts that include student veterans on financial issues and resources related to higher education. I want to congratulate the chair for this important bill. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Nushat Chowdhury, uh, Nell Beekman, Andrew Wilbur, and Smita Deshmukh. Next, introduction 1180A, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, requires each caseworker providing services at a DIFTA senior center to complete a mental health training course in older adults offered by the Department of Health and a refresher course at least once every three years. I want to thank the staff, Nusa Chowdhury, Daniel Krupp, and Andrea Vasquez for this. Congratulations, Diana. And next, we're going to be voting on a series of bills pertaining to physical education. Introduction 242B, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, would require the Department of Education to produce a report on after-school athletic funding that would include student demographic information, funding for coaches, referees, athletic directors, equipment and uniforms, and also transportation. I want to thank the staff, Malcolm Buchhorn, Smita Deshmu, Caitlin O'Hagan, and Chelsea Betemuir. Uh, introduction 1294A, sponsored by Councilmember 
Helen Rosenthal, will amend Local Law 102 of 2015 to require additional reporting on whether students with disabilities are provided with adaptive physical education, including the number of students receiving each of these options per individual school. I want to thank the staff, Malcolm Butehorn and Paul Senegal. Introduction 1298A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, the chair of our Education Committee, would require the Department of Education to report on physical education curricula in New York City schools, including average physical education class size, a description of the department's physical education scope and sequence, including the topics covered by that scope and sequence. The bill would additionally require reporting on professional development received by certified physical education instructors, and I want to thank Malcolm and Paul again on, for working on this. Next, introduction 342A, sponsored by Councilmember Debbie Rose, will require building owners who provide portable ramps for access to their buildings to post a sign at each inaccessible entrance stating that a portable ramp is available and the phone number to re request the use of a ramp. It would also require uh, it would, it would also establish requirements for portable ramps to ensure their safety and utility. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Austin Branford and Megan Chen. I'm excited to say that today we're going to be voting on uh, two bills focusing on making our streets safer. Making our streets safer and breaking the car culture is something we've been working on for a while now. I'm proud that we have an opportunity to fulfill this commitment to our fellow New Yorkers. Introduction 1163A, sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera, would require holders of Department of Transportation permits for work on a street or intersection that has a bike lane to maintain a temporary bike lane. This legislation also requires that the Department of Transportation must provide notice to affected council members, borough presidents, and the district manager of the affected community board upon approval of a permit for work affecting a street segment or intersection with a bike lane. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Nicholas Connell, James David Giovanni, and Elliot Lynn. Introduction 322A, sponsored by Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez, uh, the chair of our Transportation Committee, and very proud of this bill. Uh, he's done a great job on this. will require the Department of Transportation to develop a checklist of safety-enhancing design elements that must be considered for all major street redesign projects. For each project for which the checklist requirement applies, the Department would be required to provide an explanation for why any safety-enhancing design element was not applied. Smart street design saves lives, and these bills will make uh, th that possible. I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed to this effort to make our streets safer, and I want to thank the staff who worked on this, James DiGiovanni and Elliot Lynn. Moving on to three resolutions. Resolution 829, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, would call upon the state to pass the accompanying Senate and Assembly bills known as the Less is More Act, which would reform parole in New York State. This legislation will restrict the use of detention for minor technical violations and will give people on parole recognizance hearings in criminal court prior to being detained. I want to thank the staff, Alana Sivan, uh, Keshorn Denny, and Brian Crow. Next is Resolution 143A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, and it would call on the state to pass the accompanying Assembly and Senate bills for the Humane Alternatives to Long-Term Solitary Confinement, also known as the HALT Act. This legislation would limit the amount of time that a person can spend outside of the general jail population for 15 days to 15 days. It would also require state and local facilities develop residential rehabilitation units to replace solitary confinement. And I want to thank Alana, Keyshorn, and Brian for their work on that resolution as well. And finally, in honor of Memorial Day, which just passed, and the 75th anniversary of D-Day, which is next week, Resolution 844, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, recognizes the 75th anniversary of D-Day. On June 4th, 1944, more than 156,000 American, British, and Canadian soldiers landed in Normandy to help turn the tide of World War II. More than 4,400 Allied service men and women were killed on that day alone. This legislation honors those who served and those who fell in service. And I want to uh, congratulate Councilmember Cabrera uh, on this resolution, really important. And I want to recognize the staff, Michael Kurtz, Kevin Katowski, and Nusat Chowdhury. That concludes today's agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader.
Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into general discussion of orders, and we will begin with Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, followed by Councilmember Carlina Rivera. Uh, Councilmember Reynoso, before uh, you begin, I was remiss. Councilmember Reynoso alerted me earlier, and I apologize, it wasn't in the remarks. We're joined by some really amazing uh, young adults who are here today who have been part of the Fair Play Coalition, who have worked very, very closely with Councilmember Reynoso and the other folks, uh, Chair, Chair Traeger, as part of this package. They're here today. They've worked very, very hard on this. I'm really, really proud of them, and I want to thank them. I want to thank them and recognize their hard work. Your voice matters. Your advocacy matters. We're really grateful that you're here today, and we hope that you'll continue to work with us on issues of access and equity in our school system, not just on physical education and on sports, but on all issues that matter to young people across our city. So welcome. Thank you. And I want to turn it over to Councilmember Antonio Reynoso. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. And I also want to congratulate uh, the Fair, uh, Fair Play Coalition. I want to say this is not my bill. This is their bill. Um, they, gave, they, they gave me the honor to be able to be the council member that can carry these bills for them. These young people have been out there fighting for a long time to try to make this happen. So today, this is your victory. So congratulations to you again. In 1954, the Supreme Court ruled that separate but equal was unconstitutional. That was 65 years ago. As monumental as the decision was for the civil rights movement, very little has changed in our country's school system. Our schools are still deeply segregated and resources are distributed inequitably. We are still separate. We are still unequal. However, today we are taking a small but significant step towards greater equality within our school system by passing Intro 242 which will require the Department of Education to report on how it allocates funding to critically important after-school sports programming. Kids involved in sports have a 15% higher chance of going to college and are one-tenth as likely to become obese, have decreased rate of juvenile arrest, teen births, dropout rates, drug use, depression, suicide. Yet even with evidence in hand on the positive impacts these programs have on children, the Department of Education has chosen to allocate funding in an inequitable way, resulting in a system in which black and Latino students are twice as likely as students of other races to lack access uh, to any high school sports. 17,323 black and Latino high school students attend high schools with not even a single PSAL team, more than twice the rate for students of other races. In 2014, the most recent year this data was made available, the Department of Education spent 14% less on the average black and Latino student than on any students of other races. Uh, I want to highlight that today's victory is not just leg uh, a legislative one, but a victory for civic engagement and youth empowerment. Again, Intro 242 is not passing because of me. It is a result of sustained advocacy by students who are impacted by these inequities. And I'll just wrap it up, uh, Council Member, uh, Speaker. Um, I want to thank you for recognizing the importance of this issue and springing it into action, as well as my, as my council colleagues for supporting this important legislation. Thank you, and again, congratulations to the Fair Play Coalition. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I also want to correct for the record uh, my, uh, there was a misprint on my remarks. Uh, D-Day is on June 6th, not on June 4th, and it's important that we get that correct, so I wanted to correct that for the record. I apologize uh, for the misstatement. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Councilmember Carlina Rivera. Thank you. I want to just take this opportunity to speak on a piece of legislation that we're voting on today that I'm proud to be the lead sponsor of. You heard uh, the speaker with intro 1163, which would require that permits issued by the Department of Transportation for on-street construction include rules for the maintenance and protection of bike lanes. And before that, these stipulations had not been updated for over 10 years. And the measure isn't only for cyclists, right? Sharing the road is beneficial to pedestrians, motorists, and cyclists, and we all know with bike infrastructure growing every single year in all of our districts that this piece of legislation is overdue. It's a common sense bill, and as most common sense bills do, it came out of a constituent's concern and my own personal experience who chooses a bike as their favorite in-district transit option. So I want to thank Commissioner Trottenberg and the team at DOT 
They agree with the intent and the spirit of this bill, and they are moving to implement uh, these changes as soon as possible. And of course, I have to thank all of the advocates. The groups have been incredible in their support. And to the staff here, James DiGiovanni, Nicholas Connell, Elliot Lynn, Jeff Baker, of course. Have to thank Jason Goldman, my chief of staff, Pedro Carrillo, the great John Blasco, and my legislative director, Jeremy Unger. So this bill addresses one part of a larger conversation around safe streets, and I'm so pleased that the council is just committed to creating a New York that we want to see as one of the most pedestrian and bike-friendly states in the nation. So thank you for your support, and I appreciate everyone here. Thank you. We will now hear remarks from Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, followed by Councilmember Debbie Rose. Thank you so much, um, Minority Leader uh, Cumbo, Majority Deputy, whoever you are. Cumbo, you're in charge. <laughs> I'll take them all. You're the queen. <laughs> I um, like that one better. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I'm lost in thought about the mechanical void vote that we're taking today. And I, I just want to say on the record how deeply disappointed I am with the Department of City Planning for um, uh, making the effort to go around the city, listen to every community board, you know, and, and in fact the community boards engaged quite a bit in this discussion on mechanical voids, and the borough presidents did as well. And yet, when the final proposition came out, there was not one change made to the mechanical void uh, zoning resolution that had been put forth in the first instance. So while there were universal comments uh, asking for changes, asking for the Planning Commission to address the issues that they had said they would set out to address, uh, or at least we thought they had set out to address. I, I'm very dis disheartened by the, uh, the, the zoning law that we're going to be voting on today. Uh, it does not address height, um, which we thought it would do. And frankly, the notion that having, you know, allowing there to be many uh, void, mechanical voids in order to you know, appease developers and bring more supply. If you look at the building in my, and I'm all for more supply of apartments, surely we have to address our issues of affordable housing. But if you look at the building in my district that sparked the whole conversation, which was a developer wanting to put 160 foot mechanical void space in a building in order to have apartments that would have a much better view and yield higher returns for that developer. You know, this particular building is only bringing in 121 apartments. It's doing nothing for affordable housing, and the new zoning will only lower the height of that building by six floors. Instead of an 80-story building, we have a 74-story um, building. I'll end my remarks. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rosenthal. We will now hear from Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez. I'm sorry, Councilmember Rose, followed by Councilmember Don, uh, Idanis Rodriguez. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, I would like to thank uh, Speaker Johnson for helping me finally get this bill to see the light of day. I'd like to thank the advocates and all those who worked on this bill. Intro 342A would require that a sign be posted at inaccessible building entrances, indicating that a portable ramp is available when such a ramp exists. While creating a permanent means of accessibility to all of the buildings in New York City is the goal, we know that this is not immediately possible. In my first term, my first term, I pass intro 797A, which requires a sign at inaccessible building entrances, public toilets, and elevators stating where the nearest accessible one is. Intro 342A was a part of that bill, but we had to take it out in negotiations to get the first part passed. I promised at that time that I would continue to fight for the full provisions advocates had asked for, and we submitted a legislative request for each term after that. I have fought for this ever since, and today, nine and a half years later, that promise is being fulfilled. 
This bill will ensure that our constituents know that an accessibility ramp is available for them. They have a number that they can call to request the ramp, and more importantly, they know that they can safely gain access to the building at any time. The bill will also establish the safety standards for the ramps to prevent accidents in the future. This is just another measure to make it easier for any persons with a disability to access buildings without worry or concern for their safety. This is a win-win for all of us and for the um, communities of special abilities. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. We will now hear from Councilmember Rodriguez, followed by Councilmember Kalos. Thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you, Speaker, for the leadership. We know that this bill, the street design checklist, will never happen with our strong leadership and support that we got from the speaker. And I'm happy to see how, after listening to many story, story after the story from people from Washington High to the South Bronx, we hear how many intersections are not safe. But those stories are not only for the residents of the South Bronx and Washington Heights. That happened in many of the places in the Bronx, that happened in Brooklyn, that happened in Queens, Staten Island, and throughout the five boroughs. Reality is that when we have seen the numbers in New York City of pedestrians being killed, the number of crashes, we have seen an increase at the end of last year. No agency would like to be told what to do. But thanks uh, to the legislative staff, and, and, and the speaker and everyone, especially transportation alternative, family for safe streets, we voted today in a veto approval bill that will mandate DOT to use Vision Zero Street Design Checklist to make our city, as Council Member Kalina Rivera say, the most walkable, pedestrian, and psychic friendly in the whole nation. So this is an important milestone that we have in the city of New York to make our streets safer for pedestrians and cyclists. There's a lot more that we gotta do and this will not happen again without the support of Speaker Johnson and the rest of the colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. Excuse me, Rodriguez. And now we'll have uh, Council Member Kalos. Today we're voting to close loopholes that are allowing for construction of super tall towers in residential neighborhoods. These are towers of 900 feet and taller. The amendment was originally proposed by the Department of City Planning in response for advocacy from those of us who want to say no to empty buildings filled with voids simply to give the 1% better views, leaving the rest of us in their shadow. By strengthening and passing the proposed limit, uh, the height of mechanical voids to only 25 feet, this is down from the two buildings that exceed 150 feet or more of empty space we're taking a significant step forward towards stopping developers from getting around zoning to give billionaires views instead of building the affordable housing that New Yorkers need. To be clear, when we saw voids of 30 and 40 feet, no one did anything. Now we're seeing buildings with 150 feet of voids and we're putting a stop to those buildings and the next building with 200, 300, 400 feet of nothing but height to give views to billionaires. This is only a start and we need to go much farther and can do so by holding city planning to its promise to expand to commercial districts, to address unenclosed voids and gerrymandered zoning lots first identified in my district. There's something wrong when developers would rather build empty space to prop up wealthy rather than building the affordable housing 99% of New Yorkers need. I wanna give a huge and personal thank you to our speaker, Corey Johnson, our Manhattan Borough President, Gail Brewer, for their partnership, as well as Raju Mann and the whole land use team who've been fighting to close these loopholes and ensure that construction in our city is actually for New Yorkers. Thank you. Please vote aye. Thank you so much, Council Member Kalos. We will now have reports of standing committees. On the report of 
Special committees, Madam Majority Leader, uh, there are none. And on the reports of standing committees, report of the Committee on Aging, Intro 1180A, Mental Health Training for Caseworkers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, Intros 242B, 1294A, and 1298A, After School Athletics and Physical Education. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered M167 through Preconsidered 891, Discount Rate and Property Taxes. Coupled to general orders. Preconsidered LU 420. And Reso 903 through pre considered LU 435 and Reso 910 tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 342A Portable Ramps. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 397 Residential Tower Mechanical Voids. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 403 in Reso 911 and LU 404 in Reso 912, 34th Avenue rezoning. Coupled to general orders. LU 411, MANA products text amendments. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> LU 412 in Reso 913, 66 Hudson Yard streetscape. Coupled on general orders. LU 413 in Reso 914 and LU 414 in Reso 915, East Harlem rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intros 322A, 1163A, street design checklist and bicycle lanes. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Veterans, intro 1047A, veteran outreach. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 397 and Reso 916 and LU 411 and Reso 917 zoning amendments. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled on general orders and at this time I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Oh, I can speak now? Okay. Um, we vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. We vote aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of 403 and 404 for the usual reasons. I think it does not go far enough to providing housing. And I appreciate the work that was done on LU 397 in putting a limit or reducing the limit down to 25 feet for those mechanical voids. But I think it doesn't go far enough. I think we should have gone to zero. Why do we need to have that space that could have, in fact, been used for apartments? So for that reason, I'm voting no on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I on all except Intro 322 and pre-considered Reso 889. Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye on all with the exception of 889 and 890. I vote no. Cabrera. Aye. Matteo. No one 322 and 889. Aye and the rest. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Deutsch. Yeah, uh, please give me permission to explain my vote. Please. Permission granted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for the emphasis. <laughs> you want me to spell it out for you? Much needed. <clears throat> So uh, first, I was like, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for your unwavering support of our city's uh, veteran community. Uh, intro 1047 will require the Department of Veteran Services to conduct outreach to veterans about a plethora of information regarding higher education. Veterans are eligible for many government programs and aid for tuition, housing, and other costs associated with higher education. Furthermore, veterans can also fall victim to scams and it's important that they're all well equipped to recognize the signs of fraud. The Department of Veteran Services under the leadership of Commissioner Laurie Sutton will be able to widely disseminate this information as well as sharing it on their website. Veterans, particularly younger ones, are vastly better positioned to attain well-paying jobs if they receive a higher education. 
It's vitally important that we ensure that they have a smooth path to success as they pursue their studies. I'm grateful to my bill co-sponsor and former Veterans Committee Chairman Eric Ulrich for his support on Intro 1047, Higher Education Committee Chair Inez Barron, and our former public advocate Tish James, who has been a champion of this issue. Finally, I want to thank my committee counsel, Nuzat Saudri, and for all her hard work on this bill. Thank you, and I vote aye on all. You're welcome. Diaz. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. <laughs> I am voting yes on all, except on two resolutions that, is, that are really bothering me. Resolution 889 and Resolution 890 you help me. are calling to put punishment in homeowners that don't pay their taxes. We all know that there are many reasons why homeowners could be late on their taxes. And we are supposed to be here to try to help them not to lose their home or their properties. But these two resolutions we put in, we adding to their burden so they could lose their property sooner. I mean, we're asking close to up to 18% interest when they don't pay their uh, taxes, the homeowner. That is something that I cannot swallow. And even though if I am the only one to vote, uh, to vote no, I'm voting no on those two resolutions. We, we go out there and we go politicking out there and we tell them that we're gonna help them when we come here and then we come here and this is what we do increasing their burden so they could lose their home. This is no good, no good, no good. I'm voting no in A89 and no in A90. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. Drum. Permission to explain my vote, Madam um, Majority Leader. Per permission granted. Thank you very much. I just wanted to state how glad I am to see intro 242B on the agenda today. I want to congratulate Councilmember Antonio Reynoso. I want to congratulate the students and I want to congratulate their teacher, David Rosero, who uh, came to us uh, about four or five years ago when I was chair of the education committee to uh, show the inequities that were happening in the public school. And in, in the last term when I was chair of the education committee, we were able to secure $1 million for um, small schools athletic league. I think the second year we were able to get $2 million and then I think they baselined it. Um, but even after that, we were very disappointed to find out that the money was not getting to the schools that needed it the most. So I think the best thing we can do is what Antonio Reynoso, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso has done, which is to do some, put some sunshine on how the money is being spent for PSAL and for SSAL as well. So I vote in favor of this uh, intro 242B, as well as all the other items on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Espinal. Congratulations to all my colleagues. I vote aye on all. Eugene. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. I first and foremost echo the sentiments of our speaker um, in recognizing Councilmember Steve Levin and Councilmember Debbie Rose for once again hosting Foster Youth Shadow Day. I am so proud to introduce to all of you uh, Zaire Gomez, who is from the BX. Um, she is a junior at Walton High School with plans to go to John Jay College and really focus on so many of the issues that our foster youth face each and every day. So we're grateful to have her here along with many of our other colleagues. Um, and I will be voting aye on all. And I want to congratulate all of my colleagues that have legislation on today's agenda. I particularly want to highlight two of the resolutions that we are voting on in support of state legislation, the HALT Act as well as the bill dealing with parole violations, understanding the disproportionate impact that parole violations have on young people and in communities of color. I want to thank Councilmember Danny Drum and Councilmember Keith Powers for their leadership in that effort. And while I have time, I neglected to do so earlier today, but I certainly wanted to go on record in supporting two of the Article 11 items that are on today's agenda and thank all of my colleagues for supporting these measures. The first one is Jen 
Jennings Terrace Gardens, which is a 41-unit affordable co-op in the Morrisania community of my district. For many years, this used to be NYCHA scatter site housing before it was purchased, and these shareholders have done tremendous work to turn around these apartments in this neighborhood. It's been a vibrant part of Morrisania, and I'm so proud that we are extending the preservation for the next 40 years, as well as a 75-unit affordable senior housing, Councilmember Chin, uh, Walton Avenue, Fannie Lou Hammer, senior apartments in my district, very proud, AMIs at 50%, very proud that we are preserving senior housing. And with that, I vote aye on all, and congratulations to all of my colleagues. Joan Nye. Thank you. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I can't, I can't support the city making a profit off of struggling New Yorkers' misfortune and economic hardship. It's just not right. For the most part, if homeowners aren't paying their property taxes, it's because they can't afford to or they forgot to make their payment. And charging interest as high as 18 percent is not right. We should advance initiatives to help them get back on their feet and not lock them into financial death spirals. It is universally understood that New York City's property tax system is inherently unfair and discriminatory to the poorest of the poor. So I vote aye on all except resolution 889 and 890. Thank you. Kordenchik. Uh, permission to very, very uh, briefly just make a, a short statement, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues, especially um, today, for remembering that next week is D-Day. I want to thank the speaker for his remarks. Uh, this D-Day, I'm remembering uh, Mr. Stanley Bernstein, who was not a constituent. He was actually a constituent of Andrew Cohn in the Bronx, but he was the father and father-in-law of my dear friends and constituents, Deborah and Arnie Abramowitz. And he was in the first wave, the very first wave at Omaha Beach in Sector Dog Red. He spent his last 15 years as a New Yorker, and he passed recently at, at the ripe age of 102. Of course, it's never enough, uh, but we were blessed to have him for that lo long. Um, and with that, Madam, uh, Madam Majority Leader, it's my honor to introduce Mr. Santana to cast my vote. Aye on all. Thank you. Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of pre-considered Reso 889 and 890. I vote no on those. Thank you. Kalos. Aye. King. Mr. King votes no on 889 and 890. Votes yes on the rest. And congratulations to Fair Play. Thank you. Koo. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. I vote aye on all. And uh, I want to let folks know Shira is hoping to go to Kingsborough Community College, so maybe the council will get to see her at a future summer outing sometime when she's <laughs> out there. <laughs> Baron. Uh, thank you. I want to change my vote. I'm glad that we have the opportunity to comment on our votes. And having heard comments from my colleagues, I want to vote no on Resos 889 and 890. And that's in, in addition to LU 397, 403, and 404, and the accompanying resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Vote aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Miller. On behalf of the 27% of New Yorkers who are homeowners uh, and often struggling and who are awaiting uh, the tax commission's uh, reforms, um, I vote no on 889 and 890. I will be abstaining on 322A. I vote aye on all the rest. Thank you. 
Dois. Perkins. Powers. I and all. Reynoso. I probably vote I and all. Richards. I vote I and all. Rivera. I. Rodriguez. I. Rose. I. Rosenthal. I and all. Salamanca. I and all. Torres. I and all. I'm sorry. Traeger. Majority Leader, can I please explain my vote? Permission granted. She got that right in the first shot. That's, that's impressive. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you very much, uh, Lorraine, and to the Majority Leader. Um, just want to quickly say that uh, I want to thank all the speaker, my great colleagues, namely uh, Councilmember Reynoso, uh, Councilmember Rosenthal, uh, Chair Jenny Drum, who's been an amazing advocate and champion, and of course, the amazing student advocates, Fair Play Coalition, and so many others. Over 200,000 students in our school system do not receive the required physical education time that they are entitled to under state mandates and rules. We've also learned that a significant number of our students are denied opportunities in after school athletics, predominantly students of color. It's unacceptable. And so Councilman Reynoso and to my colleagues, thank you for your great work. And also shout out to Councilmember Rosenthal for her great bill on making sure that we are providing accommodations for all students who deserve, who need access to physical education. So uh, this is a great bill. Spe speaker, thank you for your leadership to get us to the finish line. This is a home run for our kids. With that, vote aye. Valone. Aye and all with the exceptions of 889 and 890. Van Bramer. Aye and all. Jaeger. Aye and all with the exception of resolution 889 and 890. Thank you. Combo. As a, as a future, future journalist. Lawyer. <laughs> As a future lawyer, and as a future journalist, on behalf of Majority Leader Combo, I on all. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of LUs 403 and 404 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. And intro 322A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two negative, and one abstention. And Resolution 889, which was adopted by a vote of 35 in the affirmative, 12 negative, and zero abstentions. And Resolution 890, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 10 negative, and zero abstentions. And LU 397 and Resolution 916, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, and one negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-up vote is 47 the affirmative and zero negative.
We will now move into the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? We will begin with Council Members Drum, followed by Council Member Cabrera. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. New York State has the opportunity to end state-sanctioned torture, and I am proud of this Council for leading the way with Resolution 143, which urges our state legislatures to pass and the Governor to sign the HALT Solitary Confinement Act. Experts agree that long-term solitary confinement defined as more than 15 days by the United Nations causes irreputable psychological harm. Thank you, Chair Powers, for your leadership. I also want to recognize the staff who worked on this, William Hongak, Keyshawn Denny, and Alana Sivan, also um, my um, legislative director, Sebastian McGuire. And I also want to thank the advocates, especially the HALT Solitary Campaign, whose bravery and tenacity have steadfastly pushed this issue into the public consciousness. Thank you very much. Council Member Cabrera. Thank you so much, and thank you to the speaker. Resolution 844 recognizes the 75th anniversary of D-Day. D-Day was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The invasion fleet, which was drawn from eight different navies, comprised of 6,939 vessels. June 6, 1944 will forever be edged in the annals of history for the defining moment when over 400,000 Allied troops turned the tide towards victory in World War II. N Naval operations for the invasion were described by historian Corelli Barnett as a never surpassed masterpiece of planning. 4,414 Allied brave and courageous soldiers lost their lives for our freedom on D-Day. Casualties were the heaviest at Omaha with its highest cliff. Today, we salute their selfless act of valor, and I want to thank all my colleagues for their support of this resolution, all the staff for the hard work. And I, and another note, uh, my grandfather was, he served, and I salute him, he served in World War II as one of the 351 Dominicans uh, that we were able to uh, discover, served during World War II uh, and through the Dominican Institute. Uh, so I, I salute every single one of those soldiers who really gave their heart and soul uh, so they could assure our freedom. Thank you so much, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Chin. Thank you. Uh, today we'll be voting on Resolution 714A, which would, urge, which would urge Congress to pass and the President to sign the Protecting Older Workers Against Discrimination Act, while the Age Discrimination in Employment Act of 1967 protects individuals age 40 and older from age discrimination in the workplace. A 2009 U.S. Supreme Court decision weakens these protections and make it harder for individuals to prove they were subject to age discrimination in their job. In 2017, the New York City Commission on Human Rights received 119 queries related to age discrimination in employment. We must do all we can to protect workers of every background, age, and gender, and faith. I urge all my colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Councilmember Rose. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to seek your support for um, intro, I forgot, which will create a public burial task force to review the laws, rules, regulations, and policies and procedures related to public burial and to consider and make recommendations regarding changes to such laws, rules, regulations, policies, and procedures. An estimated one million people are buried at Hart Island, most of whom remain nameless to us but to someone else, they were a child, a parent, or a friend even. A mother who gives her consent to a city burial for an infancy loss is unaware that her child will end up among other unidentified loved ones at a burial site that is not easily accessible. The task force will issue a report to the mayor with recommendations for improving the process for identifying loved ones, finding and contacting the next of kin, support and communication for next of kin that are considering a public burial or burial assistance programs and more. 
My hope is that this task force will identify new ways for the city to ensure that those identified for public burial are given a proper and dignified burial. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rolls. We just have to make sure we cannot afford to lose one member in order to hold quorum, so we need everyone to remain. <laughs> we need everyone to remain while we read the resolutions at this time. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. We'll begin with resolution 85B, an amended resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to ensure that all students have equitable access to after school athletic activities and associated funding. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions, the ayes have it. Resolution 143A, an amended resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign the Humane Alternatives to Long-Term Solitary Confinement Act. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions, the ayes have it. Resolution 714A, an amended resolution calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign S-485 and H.R. 1230, the Protecting Older Workers Against Discrimination Act. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 811, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to require inclusion of employee protection provisions in all current and future school bus contracts in New York City. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 829, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign S1343B and A5493, which would reform revocation, presumptive release, parole, conditional release, and post-release supervision. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 844, resolution recognizing the 75th anniversary of D-Day. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. At this time, we are gonna call on Council Member Eric Ulrich. All right, All right. I'm asking, please, uh, for unanimous consent to vote on all land use items and, and uh, items on the general order calendar. Unanimous, it has to mean everybody says yes, right? Okay, so hopefully uh, people go along, so. It seems like we're in a strong bargaining all right, no, position. No, no, okay. Take it easy. All right. your, caucus, your caucus voted aye on all. Uh, I don't think so, uh, they voted, <laughs> they voted, sometimes that's me, not them, but uh, I'm voting aye on all except uh, preconsidered reso 889 and 890, and I vote no on those, but I vote aye on everything else. Thank you. I tried, thank you. <laughs> We're going to wait for the new tally.
All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exceptions of LUs 403 and 404 with accompanying results, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, one, zero, one negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 322A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and one abstention. And Resolution 889, which was adopted by a vote of 35 in the affirmative, 13 negative, and zero abstentions. Reso 890, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, 11 negative, and zero abstentions. And LU 397 and Resolution 916, which was adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, and one negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call-up vote is 45 in the affirmative, and zero negative. We will now move into general discussion. We will hear from Council Members Antonio Reynoso, followed by Council Member Inez Barron, and followed by Council Member Cornegie. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Um, today we begin the process of delivering justice to workers, safety to the public, and sustainability to our environment, basic elements that the private sanitation industry has lacked for decades. I'm introducing a bill that will divide the city into commercial waste zones. Cardinals will have to undergo a competitive RFP process in order to win the right to conduct business in these zones and in this city. Uh, zones will immediately consolidate routes, reducing costs, eliminating 12 million unnecessary truck miles per year, and ensuring that 1,000 stop routes and dozens of carters servicing a single neighborhood are a thing of the past. Carters will be required to meet safety and labor standards, comply with existing recycling laws, provide organics collections to businesses, and meet customer service standards. Companies will then have to submit proposal, proposals on how they will provide adequate service, improve waste reduction, and invest, Quiet in, the chamber. And in, and invest in environmentally sustainable fleets, infrastructure, and waste disposal methods. The time to act is now. Our city can no longer wait. I cannot stand the thought of another immigrant worker being killed on the job or another child getting hit by a truck while riding his bike or another community suffering with abnormally high asthma rates. We can, we can and must do better. I urge all of my colleagues to join me in supporting this bill and push for its swift passage. Thank you. And I also have another, so just 1573, 1574, 1575, all pieces of legislation that should be addressing um, what I consider a very dark industry uh, that, that needs uh, some adjusting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Reynoso. We'll go to Councilmember Barron, followed by Councilmember Cornegy, followed by Councilmember Rodriguez in that order. Uh, thank you. Just briefly, I wanted to call attention to the passing, the recent passing of Dr. Norris McDonald. You may remember the name because we gave him a citation earlier this year. And Dr. McDonald was, in fact, you can come on, sweetie. Dr. McDonald was the founder of the African American Environmental Association, and he founded it because he observed that there was an absence of black professionals in environmental groups. And he is the one, in fact, who brought to this body the environmental bill that we passed in, mm -hmm. I think, 2017. He recently passed, so we did a great job in making sure that we acknowledge his great work while he was here. And finally, you know, it was difficult to uh, vote against the mechanical voice because it is, in fact, an improvement, and I did share some comments with my colleague. But I thought about what Dr. Martin Luther King said when he rejected the fact that people were saying a little change here and a little change there. He rejected that and said, no, we need to go all the way and have systemic change. So to my colleagues, that's what I offer in terms of uh, justifying why I was able to say no. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron, Councilmember Cornegy, Councilmember Rodriguez, Councilmember Chen. Um, okay. um, uh, events in the past few years made clear that we must take swift action to reform New York's massive commercial waste industry, which collects and manages around 12,000 tons of trash, recyclables, and organics each day from thousands of businesses citywide. Critically, we must improve safety and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We in the council can achieve those goals swiftly and effectively alongside administration officials, advocates, labor unions, the business community, and industry leaders. 
but we must approach it in a rational way that addresses problems and challenges without upending a system that largely benefited all types of businesses, especially our local food markets and bodegas, at a time when so many are still struggling to stay open. This is why we cannot support a proposal to create commercial waste zones. Instead, we should support legislation that enables us to improve the industry without killing jobs and without harming the small businesses it serves each day. To that end, I sincerely hope that you will join me in advancing a bill I introduced last year, Intro 996, which will protect our environment, our neighborhoods, and the jobs of the people who have traditionally been left out of the job market. Instead of spending millions of dollars in waiting years, we can make these important and needed changes in the private waste industry now. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez, then we will close with Councilmember Chin. Thank you. I would like to invite my colleague and all New Yorkers to pay attention to the hearing that we will have tomorrow, a joint hearing on the Committee of Health, Park, and Transportation, as we will be holding oversight on Hart Island. Everyone know that here in New York City, a few minutes away from City Island, we had the one of the largest public cemeteries in the nation being here. Unfortunately, for more than 100 years, we have not given the dignity and respect to more than one million individuals, more than a million bodies being buried in that island. Those people, they were individuals killed during the Civil, civil War, that they were black, that they were Latino, that all the individuals that didn't want to be buried together with the black and Latino, they are the poorest, they are immigrants, they are individuals that they died during the HIV. After we did a join, they walked together with Speaker Johnson, he came back with a commitment that we need to work together. And the idea is that we would transfer the control of Hart Island from Correctional to Park, that we would put together a plan of transportation. So with the leadership and support of Speaker Johnson and the rest of the colleagues, I hope that tomorrow the hearing will be here. Many answers to the question on how we can give the dignity and respect to more than one million body, body being buried in Hart Island. You know, someone who likes to visit a loved one who been buried in that place should not be escorted by someone from correctional. So again, everyone is invited. Tomorrow is the hearing at 10 a.m. Thank you. We will now move to Councilmember Chin and we'll close with Councilmember Rose. Thank you, Majority Leader. At every state and meeting, Speaker Johnson makes space for council members to recognize the lives of individuals who have succumbed to 9-11 related illness. It is a stark reminder that now more than ever, we must do all we can to expand services and compensation provided to the survivors, first responders, and workers around the World Trade Center site. It's also a reminder that our council and our city refuse to turn our backs on these heroes right now, not ever. Not now, not ever. With the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund set to expire next year, we know that there is no other option but to advocate for its permanent authorization. This life-saving program should not be attached to deadlines, especially as more and more individuals have come forward with their illness every year. That is why I am proud to join Councilmember Miller, Borelli, Richard, Traeger, and Cohen to introduce a resolution, Resolution 897, in support of the Never Forget the Heroes Act, sponsored by Congresswoman Maloney and Senator Gillibrand to fully finance and extend the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund until FY 2090. Our leaders at all levels of government must deliver on our commitment to these survivors. I thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his unwavering advocacy on this issue and Council Member Miller on his partnership, and I encourage all my colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chin. We'll now move to Council Member Debbie Rose, who will close us out. Thank you so much, Majority Leader. Um, I want to again thank Speaker Corey Johnson for being such a vocal advocate for our most vulnerable youth 
and thank you for sponsoring and allowing us to have this day. Um, you made a very special speaker for these young people. Uh, and I want to thank all of you who participated in, uh, in our Foster Youth Shadow Day. And I want to say, I want to thank Steve Levin because he's been such an advocate for this population that is in need of, of services. And I'd like to just invite all of you to participate um, immediately after stated in the committee room in our Foster Youth Shadow Day Roundtable. Um, I hope that you get to meet these young people. They are phenomenal. I hope you share your business cards with them, and I hope that you form a relationship so that they too know that they have access to not only government, but to caring individuals that um, have their best interests at heart. Thank you all. Thank you, and I just want to close out as well by thanking everyone that participated in today's program. Um, for me, I hadn't entered into the halls of City Hall until I was in my 30s. So you all are certainly ahead of the game. You all are dynamic young people. I've been thrilled to have my black girl magic up here today, which has been phenomenal. And the challenges that you all have faced you have overcome and you are sitting here today as victors. You are stronger than you know. You have overcome more than most. And because of that, you are so much stronger and have the ability to take on challenges that some people couldn't even think about overcoming. So we hope to one day see you in these chambers. We hope that you'll come back to visit again and again. You are always welcomed at City Hall, particularly for the stated meeting. And I, I just want to close. I'm so happy to see so many of the dynamic men here. You are doing phenomenal work. We in the City Council, as chair of the Women's Issues Committee, in 2021, we want to see 21 women elected to this chamber. And in 2025, we want to see 41 women elected to this chamber. <laughs> we'll save a space for the men. We'll save a space for you. But I just want to thank you all for your advocacy and leadership, and thank you all for being here. We will now have Speaker Corey Johnson close us out. And thank you all again for being the true rock stars that you are. You are an inspiration to us all. I can't say it better than Debbie and Lori said it. I am so grateful that you all are here today. We look forward to continuing a relationship with all of you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your incredible hard work and leadership. We're so excited to see what the future holds for our city with all of you. Uh, and with that, the stated meeting of May 29, 2019 stands in recess. Thank you very much. Thank you.